fire insurance companies paid out a good many thousands of dollars for damages resulting from fires that they found, well, difficult to explain. Fires for which there seemed just no earthly reason. No earthly reason. Fire in 1921. came in after high school, like they always do. They were buying sarsaparilla and stuff. Then uh, Patty Leland came in with a new kid. Never saw her before. She hung back when she seen the boys, but Patty made her come in. Then the boys started teasing the new girl, laughing about something, and she got real upset, almost cried. I was going to tell them to stop teasing the girl, but before I could, I had other things in my mind. A flame shot up from the floor right by a barrel of excelsior. Ah, some kid threw a match into it. No, sir. It didn't start in the excelsior. And nobody threw a match. A fire doesn't start from nothing. Well, this one did. Hey, you! Tim Plunkett! Come here! Come here! Tell Chief Keating what happened. Just like you said. When I went... <laughs> like one of them um, Roman candles or something. Setting a fire is no laughing matter. Unless you did it. I wasn't any place near that barrel. I was the only ones near that, that barrel were uh, Patty and Alice. Come to think of it, that's right. But Patty wouldn't do such a thing. Why, I've known her since... What's the name of the new girl? Alice Denny. Where does she live? On the corner. Across the street from uh, Burgers Wood. Who else was in the store? Uh, Pete Hubbard, Billy Wolf. But they're all right. I've known them since. It doesn't they... make any difference how long you've known them. What's so funny? Nothing. I'm going to let you go. But that doesn't say I won't check up on you. Now beat it. Why don't you leave her alone? What's the matter, Alice? Mm, nothing. Come on, tell me. Hey, you saw I didn't do anything, didn't you? You saw it wasn't my fault. Your fault about what? The fire. Well, of course it wasn't your fault. Who said it was? Nobody. Oh, just let them try and blame you. You don't have to be nice to me. Why are you so touchy about things? Like today in class, for instance. You shouldn't let Tim Pluckett make you mad. Oh. Well, I wish he didn't sit behind me. I can feel his eyes on me all the time, just staring at me. And I, when I have to get up to be called, and I, I can't think straight. Well, everybody forgets sometimes when they have to stand up and recite. He's the one that started laughing, you know. He made everybody else start laughing. They laughed and laughed and... You shouldn't have run out of the room. He's always teasing me. Right from the very first day. And the kids always laugh at me. They only laugh because they feel sorry for him. Why? Because he's going on 18 and still with us freshmen. Girls don't even like the dating because he's so clumsy and stupid. Maybe that's why he teases you. He wants you to notice him. It's getting late. My pa doesn't like me out after dark. 
Well, you can cut across by the shack. It'll save time. No. Oh, come on. I'll go with you. Oh, no, no, please. I, I, oh, I, no. No, I give me way up on the floor. No. Is that old place what scares you? It's been vacant for years. Come on, I'll show you. No! Do you have any brothers or sisters? No. Just you and your mom and dad, huh? Oh, my ma died. My aunt keeps house for us. It's nice of you to walk me home. I wanted to. I want to be friends with you. Best friends. Hello, Pa. Alice, you're late. I'm sorry, Pa. Go up and get ready for supper. Pa, I've got a friend. A best friend. Good. Who is it? Her name's Patty Leland. Well, it might interest you to know that I'm working for Mr. Leland. Started today. You mm did? -hmm. Huh? Putting new shingles on their barn roof. If you like my work, you may keep me on. He owns a lot of property. I'm glad. What <laughs> upstairs? Alice. You remember how proud your ma was of you. You won't spoil things this time, will you? Will you? No, I won't, Pa. I won't. Supper's ready. Been ready. Want to eat with your coat off? But it's in fire. How's school, dear? Fine, Aunt Mildred. Well, now, this looks mighty good. I'll get it. Yeah, there was quite a fire at 30 this afternoon. Everybody downtown was talking about it. They say it just, just flared up for, for no logical reason. I wasn't there. Did you say you were, dear? Human nature, though, for a kid to watch the fire. Mm. I can see why you wouldn't want to, though. Considering all that's gone before. Don't talk like that. You wouldn't dare talk like that if Pa was here. Now, I don't think you ought to use that threatening tone. I have to what I've done for you. I haven't told you, Pa, what happened in the woods with that boy. I told you nothing happened. He was hiding in that shack. He came chasing after me. I came home all dirty because I fell down. I don't know. I think I better tell you, Pa. Why do you have to make everything seem so awful? Why do you have to make me sound so rotten? I told you not to use that phone. Don't tell your Pa. Please don't tell my Pa. You'll say all the wrong things and you'll make me seem so bad. I don't know why I should go on being nice to you. When you're planning to give me trouble with your pa. I won't. I promise I won't. Alice, when you came in that front door, you knew you'd done it again. What? That was the fire chief. He's making a check on all the kids who were in Purdy's store when the fire started. Well, I didn't tell him anything about what had happened before, so you're in the clear once more. Alice, I give you my... I didn't do it. Stop lying. You threw that match. I didn't even have a match. Then how did you start it? I don't know how it started. It's like always, just before it happens, everything goes dark. I don't know. You do know. You start them. Now you listen to me. 
I've had to move to three different towns in the past four years on account of you. Your Aunt Mildred and I have tried to stand by you. And all you've given us is headache and disgrace. I've had enough. Now, Willie, Willie, why don't you... Mildred, you... you protected her long enough. Alice, you're old enough to know the difference between right and wrong. You listen to me. If you cause me to lose one more job, if you cause me any trouble at all, you're going to get yourself out of it. Do you understand me, Alice? I didn't do it, Pa. Do you understand me? I didn't do it, Pa. Alice, you've got to stop saying that. I didn't do it. I didn't do it. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Are all the neighbors are here? Isn't it shameful enough? I'm oh, glad your mother isn't here to see this. always wear beads. I've had my class do a Halloween party ever since I can remember. I just love Halloween, don't you? Yeah, I love Halloween too, but I've never been to a party. You haven't? Mm -mm. Wow, I sure am glad Tim Pluckett's moved away so I don't have to invite him. So am I. He's a big old, that's what he is, scaring me the way he did in the woods that time. I'm not even scared of the woods anymore now that he's gone. <laughs> oh, da 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 it's so naked. <laughs> well, don't you look nice? Thank you, Mrs. Leland. She thinks people say it's too naked. Nonsense. Evil to him who evil thinketh. Oh, this costume does bring back memories. All four of my married daughters wore it at some time or another. Here you two, you better take it back to the attic. The party begins at eight sharp, and you've got to eat your dinner yet. Alice can't eat with it. Why not? My Aunt Mildred wouldn't want me to. Oh, well. Here, wait a minute. No self-respecting gypsy will ever wear braids. Come on, thank you. Time for dresser. Here now. Oh, what lovely thick hair you've got. It's a shame to keep it braided. But my Aunt Mildred likes it braided. Well, do you think that just once she'd mind it, if maybe we put it up like this with a ribbon? Or down with a ribbon. Oh, that'll look nice. Shall we try it? All Come right. On. All right, let's take the braids off. Know it all. Miss Leland has such pretty hair. <laughs> Guess if anybody in the world knew what I know about that brat. It wouldn't make you so wonderful. Step. Huh. I thought Pa'd be back. You know he had to go to Porterville to do some business with your friend, Mr. Leland. I have to go now. I have to be there by eight. Let me see your costume. Come on, little girl. Take off your coat. Well, you ought to be ashamed. Lucky your pa's in here. Mrs. Leland said both her daughters have worn this. Oh? Well, I wouldn't accept such a cast-off rag. But then I don't go chasing people just because they're rich. Oh, that's not the reason Patty's my friend, and you know it. I have to go now. Oh, no, you don't. Not in that. But it's a costume party, and I don't have anything else. Well, then you won't be able to go. You go on upstairs and get out of that and get into something decent. 
father never forgive me if I let you go out in that thing. My father? Not my father, it's you. You don't want me to go over to Patty's because I have a happy time and nothing bad happens. And you want it to happen. You do your very best to make it happen. You ungrateful bitch. Look at you. Look at your hair going down your back. You're half naked. You're a Jezebel. That's what you're a Jezebel. Let go of me. You're no good. You're no good. You're chasing after boys. You're just like your ma. That's what you're, you're just like your ma. You dare talk about my ma. Those big eyes of hers, those, those tempting ways driving your pa half mad to marry her. Dirty, filthy. Oh, you shut your mouth. Just like your ma. Dirty. No good. No good. You come back here. You devil. You wait. I don't know. I don't know what makes us set fire. I've tried so hard to stop it. Where's Alice? They told me what happened. Where is she? She's probably hiding someplace until things calm down. Your sister's been telling me the facts about your daughter. And high time. Why didn't you tell me that she's been setting fire since she was 11? Mildred. I had to, Will. That poor boy with his hands and arms all burnt and putting out the fire. If he hadn't, the shack would have burned clear to the ground. The woods would have all burned down. Mildred, what are we going to do? She's going to have to be put away, Mr. Danning. She says she goes blank. Maybe she doesn't know. What do you mean, goes blank? She says that just to make you feel sorry for her. She knows what she's doing. Will. Will, I feel just as bad as you do. But we've got to face it. She's dangerous, and she'll get worse.
on purpose, Aunt Mill. You know I don't. You make it happen. You want it to. Make what happen, Alice? Make what happen? Oh, Aunt Mill. Don't. Don't what, Alice? Badly frightened. About the fire? Something deeper than that. Don't you dare! <laughs> Don't what, Alice? Don't dare what? Ma's not dirty. Don't you dare! Alice! You call Ma dirty? Don't you dare! Miss Denning, will you stand at the foot of the couch so she can see you when she wakes up? Say something to her. Alice, wake up, dear. Alice. Alice. Go away. Go away. Alice, sweetheart. That Milburn. You said bad things about Ma. Go away. Poor child, she doesn't know what you say. You said it on purpose. To upset me. Because that's when it happened. And you want it to happen. Don't talk crazy. I won't live here anymore. No. No, not since my mom left. Not since you came. Shh. Alice. Alice, baby. No, don't touch me. Alice. Don't touch me. You made it happen again. You made it happen. By itself. The fire just started. Not by itself. Because of her. There's a devil in her. She's a witch. I've known it all along. I've known the fire started by themselves. From her. You knew? Why didn't you tell me the truth? From her. From the devil in her. The devil's not in Alice, Miss Denning. You're lying. She's a witch. I saw it. We all did. What is it? I don't know. I don't know. Nobody really knows. But Alice was not an isolated case. There have been others. The ability to induce spontaneous combustion may be a survival of a power from ancient times. Then it would have been called a miracle of great value. For the worship of fire stems from man's earliest beginning. Well, at least that's a theory. I can tell you some facts about Alice herself, however. Today she is happily married with grown children of her own. And her power, a power she certainly never wanted, disappeared when she felt secure, when she knew she was loved. In a moment, a program note about next week.